Pierce, I've always been interested in the uh, jobs actors have early on. Now, you mm. worked as a commercial artist at Harrods Department Store for a while, didn't you? No, not at Harrods. I, I drew furniture for Harrods Department Store. I was, I was an illustrator. And, uh, oh, time to go. Time to take the pills. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I drove a taxi, a minicab. I was a minicab driver oh, God, in Brixton, which is like, you know, the kind of Harlem of, 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 Lo of London, you know? That was, that was tough. And then up in North London, I drove one with all the paddies, with my fellow Irishmen. I was a barman. I was a waiter. I was a chicken sexer. What's that? <laughs> male, female, male, female, male, female. Um, I worked in, oh, that's it, yeah, I did a lot of things, you know. When uh, the show Moonlighting became successful, uh, I always thought there were a lot of similarities between that show mm -hmm. and Remington Steele. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you find that? Oh, sure. Definitely. Well, Glenn Caron wrote for Remington Steele. He was one of the best writers we had. And Glenn was always chomping at the bit. He was always, and I loved his writing. And, uh, you know, he always wanted to just throw the whole deck of cards up in the air and see where they fell. But the guys, you know, the producers on the show, they wanted to keep, to keep Remington and Laura going in this little groove, and that's what they did. But so Glenn went off and did his own thing and created a great vehicle. So yeah, I mean, it was like, you know, but there was Heart to Heart, then there was Remington Steel, then there was Moonlighting. Before that, there was even The Thin Man. You, know. you made a lot of uh, headlines uh, during that whole uh, James Bond thing. Yeah. In, in, in hindsight <laughs> now, do you think you might have, there may have been some problems if you would have been cast as uh, James Bond? <clears throat> oh, no doubt. There's always problems. There's always, you know, life is full of problems. Once you know that, you're ahead of the game. Um, I'm glad, in some respects, that it didn't work out. It's made me a better man, a better actor in some, in some ways. Uh, there was a lot of pain, a lot of sadness there, anger, because you really felt, you know, that you were just manipulated, you know, and, uh, you know, the people who did it, just short people, you know, and they know who they are, and uh, we work together, you know, I see these people, but, you have to let that go. And it took a while, you know. I didn't realize it. I mean, when it first happened, I was just, I was nonplussed. I mean, because Cassie, my wife, and the children were all thinking, well, we were relocating ourselves back to London. We'd sent the children to boarding school, and it certainly didn't happen. But life is like that, you know. And certainly an actor's life is like that. It's just that in that particular case, it was very high profile. Now, going into a, 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 a movie with Robin Williams, are you a little bit nervous going in that uh, he's just going to go hog wild and everything's going to go out the window? No, I really wasn't actually. And uh, I mean, Robin is such a kind of giving character and such a loving person anyway. And I'm a, I'm a you know big fan of the guy's work, so it was it was easy. And you know, and I respect his work so much, you know, that you don't try and top him. You don't try and you don't try and compete. I mean, be it that you can just hang in there for a few minutes, makes you feel so good anyway. Uh, but you just give the guy space, you know. And when his lips stop moving, you try and get your lines in. I've always been interested in when actors do uh, eating scenes in movies, in restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're eating, I think, was it a shrimp or a piece of <coughs> lobster? Shrimp. Now, how many takes of that did you have to do, and did you have to... Uh, well, eating scenes are interesting, especially if you have to eat a whole meal, because then you've got continuity, you know, and, in, and it's usually the young actors who go in there and they're eating and acting, eating and acting, and they think this is wonderful, and then they come to the matching and they can't do the matching. On that particular take, I just had to put, put it in my mouth and gag, you know. It was, uh, but we did the sequence. I mean, the sequence was, lasted 12 days, 12 days of shooting. It's a big sequence. And one really quick question. Mm. Uh, I was really impressed how your character could have been played very easily as a villain, as a bad guy. No. no. Was that something you had to fight for? No, I didn't. It was already scripted like that. That was the magic of Chris Columbus and, and Robin.